ask a room full of people what the primary colors are. You'll find three groups of people. One who'll say red, green and blue, RGB. These are the people who've seen too much media. Another group will say red, yellow, blue, RYB. These people really trust their school teachers. And then there'll be a third group who'll say the primary colors are cyan, magenta and yellow. But they'll never say CMY, they'll always say CMYK. These are the people who've just heard a fun fact and want to brag about it. But what are the real primary colors? I think we need to talk about this. Hello, get from the best Namaskar ladies and gentlemen, welcome to I Sanskari. My name is Sanskar. And before talking about primary colors, I think we should first discuss what are colors? Think of light as waves. Now different waves have different wavelengths, which is just a fancy word for the distance between two consecutive topmost points or bottommost points known as crests or troughs. As the wavelength changes, the wave changes, which means the light changes. Our eyes are made up to detect different types of waves based on the different wavelengths. How does our eye do that? Our eyes are made up of two different types of cells, the rod cells and the cone cells. Now, although there are a lot more rod cells than the cone cells, the colors are detected by the cone cells. There are three different types of cone cells. There are the long wavelength cone cells, the medium wavelength cone cells and the short wavelength cone cells. So depending upon the wavelength of the light, different types of cone cells are activated. And depending on which cone cell is activated, our brain perceives that as different colors of light. Makes sense till here. Fairly easy. The long wavelength cone cells was in fact earlier known as the red cone cell. The medium wavelength cone cell was known as the green cone cells. And the short wavelength cone cells were known as the blue cone cells. This is because as you've guessed it, the long wavelengths are perceived by our brains as red colored light. The medium wavelength are perceived by our brains as green colored light and the short wavelengths are perceived by our brains as blue colored light. Now, obviously, some light also has wavelengths that are even shorter than what the short wavelength cone cells can perceive. That light is known as ultraviolet light. The light exists, but our brains and our eyes are not made to perceive them. Similarly, for wavelengths that are longer than what the long wavelength cone cells can perceive, those lights are known as infrared lights. All right, so now we know what colors are. What are primary colors? By definition, primary colors are those colors which when mixed together in different ratios will generate the entire spectrum of colors. All the colors that are possible can be made by using only the primary colors. Now, if you're paying attention, you might think since the eyes are made up of red, green and blue cone cells, that means every color that we see is made up of some combination of red, green and blue. So red, green and blue should be the primary colors. You're absolutely right. Red, green and blue are the primary colors when we're talking about additive colors. That is a new word. Let's talk about additive and subtractive colors. Look around your room and find a red object. Done? Now, look at that object. Good. Now ask yourself, why do you know that that object is red? We just talked about it. When you're looking at that object, red light from that object is hitting your eyes. But that object is not a source of light. I'm hoping it is not. If it is, look at some other red object that is not a source of light. How does it give off specifically red wavelength of light to your eyes. Every object has a property to reflect light. When you're looking at that particular red object, what is happening is the surrounding light. I'm hoping you're surrounded by white light. That may be the lights in your house or the sun. All of the other wavelengths of light except the red wavelength are absorbed by the object. And only the red wavelength is reflected back. And that is what hits your eye and you see, oh, that object is red. Which actually means, if you think about it, that object is not red. In fact, that object is every other color in the entire universe except red. Because red is the only color that it is reflecting off. Fine, we now know that. If I show you red color on screen, and if you see a red object in front of you, two different things are happening. Remember, a screen is a source of light. So whenever you're seeing red on a screen, actual red light is 
thrown at your eyes from the screen but when you're looking at an object that is in front of you the properties of that object make it such that that object is every color except red so that you can see red now bring this in the world of paints you might have heard that when you mix all the colors of light together you get white light now that is absolutely true but what happens when you mix all of the paints that you have say in a paint box together you don't get white paint you get black paint why does that happen because what is the property of a particular color of paint to absorb every other wavelength of light and reflect one particular wavelength right but when you mix all of the paints together some light is being absorbed by one particular paint and the other is being absorbed by another particular paint so in essence all of the light that hits the paint is being absorbed and you get nothing black that is why when you mix paints in real life you get black but when you mix all the colors of light you get white this is where the term white noise comes from for sound when you mix all the wavelengths of sound together because sound is also a wave you get this sound this is known as white sound no no <laughs> kya ho gaya this is known as white noise similarly in light when you mix all the wavelengths of light together you get white light so when mixing all of the colors together gives you black that is known as subtractive colors and when mixing all of the colors together gives you white that is known as additive colors we've already talked about the primary colors for additive colors let's talk about the primary colors for subtractive colors which is the colors in the real world let's go back to that red object that you were looking at look at it again now remember our eyes can only see objects in terms of red green and blue so for this object to be red since this is a screen the pixels have to have a lot of red only red but in the real world when you're looking at the object in front of you the red object in front of you what actually has to happen is that the properties of that object should make sure that there is no red in that object itself it reflects all of the red and it absorbs everything other than red what is everything other than red for our eye green and blue and what does green and blue make that is right cyan similarly for an object to appear green in the real world what it actually should be is everything other than green it should be red and blue together making magenta and for an object to appear blue in the real world it should be everything other than blue it should be red and green together It should be yellow. This gives us the subtractive primary colors: cyan, magenta, and yellow. But again, C M Y is never pronounced C M Y. It is always pronounced C M Y K. K here stands for black. Don't ask me why. Okay, but we have not talked about red, yellow, blue yet. See, this is where the real world comes in. When kids are learning primary colors. at the age of 4 or 5 in elementary schools they are going to use it to create drawings and art on their art book which is the real world so the primary colors that they should learn is the subtractive primary colors which are cyan magenta and yellow but teaching 4 year olds colors like cyan and magenta is not practical because of course it is not so to make things easier cyan is replaced with blue and magenta is replaced with red giving us the weird primary colors red yellow and blue that is the story of primary colors to summarize there are three different types of primary colors rgb red green and blue are the primary colors whenever you're talking in terms of actual light which is also true in terms of screens because screens are sources of light CMY or cyan magenta and yellow are primary colors whenever you're talking about the real world but these are not practical to use while doing art but these are used whenever you're doing things like printing this is why the inks used in your printer are cyan magenta yellow and black CMYK and red yellow blue well they are the primary colors whenever you want to draw for your kids and that is it thank you for watching If you liked the video make sure to hit the like button and if you learned something subscribe to the channel for more content like this